What's going on everybody? Before today's video starts, I just want to let you know that I finally have shirts. They're live right now, thecarpassionchannel.com slash store. We got the channel logo on the front and it looks a little basic at first, but it's actually kind of special. So the turbocharger, I mean, yeah, it's just a turbo. We all know them, we all love them. The coilover, it's a Miata coilover. The brakes, Miata Willwood system. And the piston and rod is actually a Miata piston and rod. So it's actually pretty sick, but wait, there's more. On the back, we have possibly my favorite saying of them all, just one more PSI. And even for the people out there that aren't boosted, what that means to me, and I think it can mean really to everyone is, I'm just all about taking the setup you have and pushing it to the limit. Like, yeah, if you're turbo, literally you can go just one more PSI, just one more PSI. Many of us have been sitting on the dyno trying to hit that number. And like, I really think it's just one PSI away. Taking that setup and just pushing it to the limit. But you know, even if you're like drag racing with a stock engine or like whatever you're doing, it's all about pushing that limit with whatever you have, whatever you can afford. So yeah, we got the shirts right now. I got them in stock, all sizes. I got them in this nice heather charcoal gray and <laughs> we got them in black heather as well. And I got some nice photos on the website right now as well that will give you some close up detail on these shirts. But yeah, I think they're pretty sick. They're, uh, they are premium. You know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but these are some nice shirts. They're very soft, very comfortable. They are not cheapo depot shirts. Free shipping to the US and international shipping is also available wherever you live. Whether you got a Yunos, whether you got a Miata, whether you got an MX-5, they're available now. So go check them out, link in the description. What's going on everybody? Greg Peters, oh, that sounded dumb. What's going on everybody? Greg Peters with The Car Passion Channel, otherwise known as Miata Dad. Now as you guys saw in a previous video, the new NB is in need of some tender loving care. So I'm going to split the maintenance up into a few different videos that kind of have a theme to them. And today's theme is going to be, I'm gonna to try to rapid fire as many fixes as I can that are the easiest and hopefully free. So I know there's several things on the car that I'll be able to tackle or at least dig into and learn a little bit more about. I don't know how many things I'll be able to get done today, but I'm gonna to try to get as many done as I can. And I have a feeling some of them are gonna be common issues that are gonna help you guys at home with your Miatas. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna jump into here is, can we talk about the gap and the soft top? This is fully latched here. You see how big that gap is? When you're on the highway, it sounds like you're driving through the movie Twister in this thing. Now, I realize that soft tops are a little bit noisier than hard tops, but there's a couple things you can do to make sure your soft top is lining up at least as good as possible to reduce any extra wind noise. So the first thing is going to be just a simple latch adjustment. When you open up the latch here, there's a little plastic piece you can flip off, and then you can adjust this turnbuckle and the shorter you make that rod, the tighter that latch is gonna pull the top. Now, obviously you don't wanna go too tight to where you're crushing the seal. Mine had a ton of adjustment so I could make it tighter. I went to latch it and noticed that the latch, it was totally crooked compared to this striker. So that's another problem. Now you can loosen up the latches and get a tiny bit of angle adjustment. Not a lot, but a little bit of angle adjustment. I went to loosen my latches and I noticed that half of the screws were already loose and about to fall out. So obviously that's another problem. And of course I have found nothing but stripped screws. So if you have stripped screws on your soft top latches, which is a super common problem. I don't know why they decided to use Phillips head screws here and they're like super Loctited from the factory. But what you can do is take a thin cutoff wheel on a Dremel and just slot the screws and bam, now you can use a gigantic flathead to loosen and tighten these things. I got everything lined back up as best I could and now you can see with the soft top fully latched, it sits much better. It lines up much better on that windshield line and let me tell you on the freeway, this thing is much quieter. Next thing that I really want to get on top of early is the fuel leak. 
week. Now, some people suggested that could be the lines in the back under the parcel shelf here that just get old and brittle, obviously like any rubber on a 20 or 30 year old car. So I wanted to pull everything off and just kind of inspect it and see if anything was going on. So basically you have some pop rivets, you have some 10 millimeters and you can remove this little access panel and get to all the lines that are on top of your fuel pump and on top of your fuel tank, turn the key to the on position or even start the car and see if there's any seeping fuel. A lot of times it won't puddle up because it evaporates very quickly, but on first startup, you might be able to see or smell excessive vapor coming out of this area. I did not spot anything here. Hopped over to the front of the car, started it, and definitely heavy fuel smell. So it took a little bit of looking around in all the lines and whatnot, way in the depths in between the throttle body and the valve cover you can see purely just dripping fuel, which is <laughs> never a good thing. So that is the fuel pressure damper. I will get into fixing that later in the video, but for now, I'm gonna jump over to the exhaust manifold. This thing has definitely got a serious exhaust leak. You can smell the exhaust fumes. You can hear it on startup. You can hear it when you're driving. And what you can do is dump soapy water onto the manifold, anywhere where it has a ceiling surface, manifold against the head, uh, the manifold where it meets up to the cat if you have a pre-cat or, or where it meets up to the mid pipe. Now, do not do this on a supremely hot engine. This engine barely has any temperature in it. You do not want to dump cold water on a hot engine. So what you can see here is as I dump the soapy water and I give it a rev, there is uh, some pretty serious bubbling between the manifold and the pre-cat. That exhaust gasket, $50 over the OEM gasket. You, or you can get the crappy ones that'll blow out for $17. Don't worry, I got an even better plan for that. All right, so that annoying leak is gonna be addressed in a later video. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing. So I mentioned before, if the car is just sitting idling with the AC on, it does start to overheat. The very first thing you should look into if your car is overheating specifically at idle is to make sure the fans are working properly. Now you have one fan that kicks on somewhere around 180 or 190, that's your main cooling fan. And then you have a secondary fan that turns on if you turn the AC on. And it should also be turning on at some temperature higher than that. It's like around 225 or so. So if the car is overheating, both fans should be cranking, even if you have the AC off. When the car was starting to run warm, I popped the hood and one of the fans was not running. So there's a couple things this can be. It can either be uh, the fan relay or a fuse or something, specifically the AC fan relay, which is right here. One of these, I do not remember which one it is, but one of these two relays is the fan relay. And what can happen is you can get corrosion inside here and biff up the connections. Sometimes just pulling that relay off, cleaning the connections, putting everything back together, we'll get it working. And somehow, miraculously, both fans all of a sudden started working. So I let the car just sit and idle with the AC on for like 20 minutes. Temperature was rock solid, it would not heat up. Um, if you're doing this test yourself, you also wanna make sure the hood is closed because if the hood's open, it's gonna dissipate a ton of extra heat. So I shut the hood, let it run for a long time. And while I was letting it running, trying to get the car to overheat, I found a fuel damper for a 99 Miata. So that is what I am going to work on later in the video. I know everyone doesn't have just an extra fuel damper laying around, but at least if you watch this video, you know how to replace it if you need to. All right, so hopefully the fans keep working. I don't know, it's really random. I just unplugged everything, plugged it back in, and both fans started working fine. So I definitely got to keep an eye on that. There could be some electrical issue that I didn't really solve, but for now it's solved. I want to do a fix that I just learned about from you guys in my own comment section and that is fixing my window, which would only roll down a couple inches. You guys informed me that there's actually a little clip that breaks and just it just takes a zip tie and you can fix your window. So check this fix out. So all you gotta do here is pull the door panel off of the door, which contains the broken window, if that's not obvious already. And that's just a couple screws and a couple pot pins. And then you're gonna peel back this sticky, nasty stuff. Do not get that on your clothes or in your hair. Uh, or eat it or anything like that. Now that that's off, if I stuff my DSLR inside the door, you can see there's a white clip right here and that is the clip that breaks and the cable is then not held in place and it starts to bind when you try to roll your window down and it will not let the window roll down all the time. And that clip belongs in this hole right here. So what we're gonna do, you can see, uh, I tried to put it back in, but there's a little uh, broken leg there so it will not stay in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a zip tie, stick it through, 
wrap it around the cable, and then pull the same zip tie back out, zip that thing, cut it off, and I mean, it's pretty much as good as factory. Now let's check out this window to see if it rolls down. All right, so it rolls down, it does not bind, but it's still a little slow. So this is the part where you can take your window out, you can clean the tracks and re-grease them. I got pretty lazy right here and I just used some spray lube as a test to see if the window would roll up and down any faster, which I'll demonstrate here. And as you can see, my window is now very fast and it could probably do a quarter mile in about 13 seconds. So that's definitely my issue. Really the proper way to do it is to pull the window out and grease the tracks. If you are wanting to do that or wanting to replace your window regulator, I already have a video on how to replace your window regulator and how to get all this stuff out of the door for any sort of service you're doing in there. And I'll link that video down below. I did it on my NA, but the process is pretty much the same for NA and NB manual windows and power windows. So I'm pretty stoked on this. That is another problem fixed and it costs about a penny. All right, without further ado, let's get into the beefiest fix of the day. And that is replacing the fuel pressure damper. Uh, not to be confused with the fuel pressure regulator, which lives over here on the side of the engine. The regulator is what regulates the fuel pressure and the damper prevents spikes in fuel pressure is my understanding. Let's jump into it. You're gonna start by taking your intake to, okay, this was already loose. Why do I just keep finding loose screws on this car? And there's a ground that was not even connected. And this lo actually looks important. There's several wires connected to this. Okay, <laughs> so we're definitely gonna connect this when we put the car back together. Anyways, unplug all of these harnesses, I mean, all these plugs and you can completely get this harness out of the way. You wanna get as much stuff out of the way as possible so you have good working room. Go ahead and disconnect the brake booster hose. You can pull the PCV hose off, unbolt the throttle body. Now you got four, uh, actually two nuts, two bolts on the throttle body, and there's also a couple underneath, very hidden sneaky boys, but you do have to pull those off. You're not gonna be able to remove the throttle body fully because there's these annoying little things called throttle body water lines for people that live in um, freezing temperatures, but it's okay. We just need to get the throttle body out of the way like this, and boy is it disgusting. I definitely need to clean that thing. I'm sure the inside of the intake manifold is gonna look the same way. That is, uh, pretty sure that's a product of the good old EGR system. Them. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and pull that throttle body off. You can you can do it tomorrow. Look how easy it was. Now I'm going to pull the upper tank off of the plenum. This is the same for BP4W, BP6D, square top. Now the vacuum lines are going to differ a little bit between the different years of manifolds. You have VTCS, you have VIX. Uh, the square top does not have any of those systems, but there's little vacuum lines here and there. But if you try to remove the upper tank, the upper plenum, you'll see if something's getting stuck. All right, and here we have our glorious VIX system. It stands for variable intake charging system and not charging like your battery, but the charge like the intake charge. Some people also call it variable intake control system, I think, but I believe charging is the correct word for it. So basically if some butterflies in here, they're closed at low throttle to help torque and then they open up in the high RPM above like 5,300 to give you that mad extra two horsepower, whatever it is. I'm gonna be dyno testing this later to see like where the best crossover point is and all that and see how much it actually does. And this car is gonna live on the dyno a lot. I hope, I hope the motor survives. But anyways, we're getting off track here. Make sure your gas cap is removed because you're gonna be opening up the fuel system. Side note, removing the gas cap does not relieve fuel pressure from the system. In order to do that, you have to pull the fuel pump relay and then crank the car over. Now I'm gonna crack this thing loose with a couple 10 mils before I loosen the rail. You are gonna have to loosen the rail to get this thing out. It would be pretty difficult, if not impossible, to try to replace it without at least loosening the rail. Now notice, underneath the fuel rail, there are a total of three plastic spacers. You do not wanna lose those plastic spacers. You have to make sure they're in place when you bolt the fuel rail back down. Otherwise, you will damage your injector seals. Once you unbolt the fuel pressure damper, just bolt the new one in and make sure your fuel injectors are all seated properly. When you put the rail on, you should be able to push the rail down against the black spacers and there's no gap. If you cannot do that by hand, then all four of your injectors are not seated all the way. Once you make sure they're seated, then you can tighten the fuel rail back down. And then you pretty much do everything in reverse order. Put your upper tank on, hook all your lines back up, put the intake back on, throttle body, all that. And we're ready for the moment of truth. We're gonna fire it up here and do us a zoom. 
with a flashlight and see what's going on. And look at that, there it is. Your fuel leak has been fixed. This is not a super common problem, but obviously it's possible. You just saw what it looks like. All right, well, I'd say not too bad for an afternoon. I feel like I got a lot of stuff done today. And I've left my official greasy fingerprints on the hood, indicating that the fun has begun. Okay, well, I feel like I got a lot done this afternoon on the NB. I got some hard hitting things taken care of. I'm stoked that the window is fixed. Thank you to the bajillion people who commented on my other video about the zip tie fix, which worked excellent along with greasing the tracks. Um, pretty pumped I fixed that fuel leak. That was a pretty serious issue, especially because the fuel damper is right above the alternator. So guys, if you smell fuel, um, especially at cold mornings on startup, you gotta look into it, you gotta get it fixed. We are just scratching the surface with Too Soon Junior. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be diving into a huge box of maintenance parts that I just got from Treasure Coast Miata, and we're gonna be taking care of some real big stuff on the NB that I'm sure a ton of your Miatas need as well. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to smash like if you learned something, if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.